Welcome everyone, they call me Intro Tech Out, and first of all, my Doom inspired first person shooter, Dream Relentless, is out now. If you hadn't seen it already, definitely give it a try if you're interested. Anyway, let's talk about object pickup systems in Dreams. Because a couple months ago, I uploaded a first person object pickup template to Dreams, but I've never really explained how it works. That's why I'll go into that today. Now it's always important to keep in mind that there are endless ways to do specific things in Dreams. The method I use for my template and the one I'll explain in this video will not necessarily be the best method or the definitive method. Should any of you know ways to improve this system or even hold better ways to do this, you're free to put it in the comments. Let's get into it now. I'll first explain how to make this mechanic and at the end I'll show where to find everything in my template and basically explain the whole thing a second time. So first, we need to choose a character to make the mechanics with. You can use Media Molecules template or a character of your own. I'll use my user-friendly first person template because it has some quality of life improvements over Media Molecule ones and allows for easy manipulation of the arms. The first thing we'll create is the follow logic. Make a box or take an object from the Dreamiverse and stamp it into your scene. The object should be physical, so turn on movable if this isn't activated yet. Now place a marker chip on the object and place a follower in there. A follower moves to a tag with a certain name. You can give the tag whatever name you want, but in my template I named it TP underscore pickup, with TP standing for teleport. Some of you might be asking why I don't go for a teleporter instead then of a follower, but teleporters, while they do work, a follower is more physical if you get what I mean. With a follower an object will actually travel the distance while you move it around, while a teleporter just keeps teleporting the object to your location. Teleporters just make physical interactions with the object slightly worse, and it of course also allows for glitches where you're able to place things inside and on the other side of walls. You also can naturally throw an object by flicking the right stick and letting go at the same time, which can be a lot of fun. Now of course, nothing is happening right now because we need to place the tag somewhere. If you place the TP underscore pickup tag in the player microchip, the picked up object will just launch straight at you and hit you, so we'll need to make a separate object that the object will follow while picked up. I copied the camera block present on the head of the player of media molecules in my template, deleted the logic on it and placed it somewhere in front of the head, at the location where I want the grabbed object to eventually be. Because this object is already in the head group, this block will always be at the same location in your vision. Now of course the block is invisible so you won't see it in play mode. After bringing the block into position, place a new microchip on it and place a tag in that microchip. This tag will call the earlier mentioned TP pickup. This in theory should make the object on the ground move to this location. Let's test it. Nothing much happens, right? Well that's because the follower doesn't have enough force to actually move the object to your location. Let's change that. Tweak the follower and set the strength to 100%. Now if we test, you see that the object moves to the right location. It does bounce all over the place though. This can be fixed by also setting dampening to 100%. If we test again, you'll see it stays in place now. But what happens when we start walking around? Well, the object gets left behind because it can't keep up with the speed at which you're walking. Setting the speed of the follower to somewhere around 100 meters per second will fix this as well. This all should get it to work semi-decently. Now if you have a wall in your scene, you'll see that pushing the object against it will make it rotate. If you want that, that's fine. But if you do not want that, you can fix it in two ways. And this will just be a design decision. Right now you can see that the object doesn't automatically face the player. This can be desirable if you want the player to be able to see all sides of the object they pick up. The disadvantage though is that the player isn't able to change the rotational position of the object, meaning they can't place it the exact way they want. You can also make it so the object automatically rotates towards the player. This limits the player to only being able to see the same side when they pick up the object, but the advantage is that they have more control over placing the object. Of course a hybrid system is possible where you can rotate and manipulate the object, but I don't want this tutorial to become too complicated. I might add this function to the template in the future though. If you want the first system, you can place a gyroscope in the microchip of the object. Setting the strength and dampening to 100% should fix the rotation problem. If you want the second system, you can place a look at rotator in the object microchip and make it look towards the tag look at me which should be present in both Media Molecules and my template. Should this not work somehow, make it look for a tag with a new name and place this tag in the camera microchip on the head of the puppet. 
With the object now properly following along, it's time for the pickup logic itself. This is the point where I'll have to explain a bunch of logic out once, so you might need to pause and repeat certain bits of this video if you're following along. Let's begin by placing an exclusive git in the microchip of the object. I called it grab. Set the thing to interrupt in its tweet menu and keep it set to automatic. Exclusive gates make sure only one of something is active at a time, so if you have four exclusive gates all given the same name, only one can be active at a time. By setting them to interrupt we allow the activation of one of the exclusive gates to deactivate all the other ones, even if another one is already active. In this case exclusive gates are used to make sure you can't pick up two objects at a time. Now when two objects are too close to each other, trying to pick them up will result in conflicting exclusive gates and one of them will randomly stay active while the other one stays inactive. It's probably not truly random in theory which one will be picked up, but as far as the player is concerned, it's random. Without the exclusive gate you'd pick up both objects at the same time. This exclusive gate then should be connected to all the logic that should be active when grabbing an object. So that's the follower and the gyroscope or look at rotator depending on what system you chose. I usually use the active output of the exclusive gate, but you can also use the gate output one. Now next, let's place two new tags in the block in front of the head. One will be called pick up and one let go. Now we place two trigger zones in the microchip of the object. We make the search for one of these tags each. Remember you can use the d-pad to easily scroll through active tags. We'll make the zone size of the pickup trigger zone about 1 meter. We'll use this trigger zone to check if the player wants to pick up the object. So we'll be able to pick up the object as long as the grab block is in the zone of this trigger zone. Next, let's make the zone shape of the let go trigger zone scene. This will make the trigger zone look for the tag in the entire scene. So no matter where the object or the player is at any point, letting go will make the character let the object go. Both trigger zones also need to search for tags. Now behind the pickup trigger zone we'll need to place a counter and connect it. The counter will connect to the exclusive gate and the let go trigger zone will wire into the reset input of the counter. Now when the pickup trigger zone detects the pickup tag within range, the counter will count to 1 and stay on, permanently activating the exclusive gate in the process. The exclusive gate now sends a signal to the follower and gyro or look at rotator, which will make the object fly to that grab block in the player. Of course we're not done yet, because there are currently no button inputs required to pick up the object and there's no way to let go. For this we need to do some logic on the player's side. One last thing we should do before moving on to the player is to add a tag to the object that will signify when it's being picked up. Let's call this tag picked up and connect it to the exclusive gate. Now on the grab block let's first add a node. A node doesn't do anything except transfer a signal. It's handy for organizing. To this node we'll connect the grab button. I'll use square but you can use whatever button you want of course. You can find these buttons in the tweak menu of a controller sensor by the way. There's one inside every puppet. After connecting the button to the node, let's place a signal manipulator and set it to pulse. If we connect it to the node, we will always send a pulse when pressing the grab button, even if we hold the button. This is just something to prevent glitches from happening. Connect the signal manipulator to the pickup tag. To allow us to drop the object when pressing the grab button a second time, we'll need to activate the let go tag only while an object is being grabbed and the square button is pressed. Just connecting the let go tag to the square button directly will make the object drop immediately when you pick it up. So to prevent this from happening, place a new trigger zone, set it to scene and make it search for the tag picks up. This is the tag that we last place in the microchip on the object, it's only active when the object is currently being grabbed. Next place an AND gate and wire the output of the trigger zone and the signal manipulator into it. Next connect the output of the AND gate to the let go tag. This should be it in theory. Let's test. Everything should pretty much work now. There are some more things you could add though. How about an indication of which object you're trying to pick up? This is really easy, just place a trigger zone in the object's microchip that searches for the TP pickup tag in the same range as the one that searches for the pickup tag. Now at this point all these tags might have become a bit blurred together in your mind, so a reminder. The TP pickup tag is always active in the grab block and it's the tag that the object will move to while grabbing while the pickup tag is only activated as a short pulse when trying to pick up an object. Connecting this TP pickup trigger zone to a keyframe that increases the object's brightness will make it so the object lights up when you're in a position to pick it up. To stop the objects or other objects from glowing when grabbed, you can simply take the output of a picked up trigger zone, run it through a NOT gate and connect the output of the NOT gate to the power of the TP pickup trigger zone. 
Now the trigger zone is only allowed to check for the grab box as long as no object is currently being grabbed, meaning that it's impossible for the object to light up when something is currently being held by the player. Another improvement is to add an actual arm animation to the player character. We can make the puppet force grab for example. If you want to link animations or other things to actions, just ask yourself, which tag will be active in the state I'm looking for? Well, a force grab animation is probably only active when the picks up tag is active, meaning that if we place a keyframe or timeline with the corresponding animation behind the picked up trigger zone that's already present in the grab block, we should probably get a good result. Never forget that, should you animate these arms, you always need to include every part of the arm, shoulders included in every keyframe, by shortly tapping L2 on them. If you don't do this, the arms will completely break and glitch out. Now already a heads up, I've also seen this happen with fully animated arms, when you move while transitioning from an animated to a non-animated state. This seems to be a bug in dreams. Should this happen to you, make use of an exclusive gate set to Q and interrupt to power on a keyframe that forces the arms into their standard position constantly. Additionally, all other keyframes that move the hands or arms should be activated through a similar exclusive gate. I hope this glitch won't happen to you, but if it does happen, that's pretty much the only solution, I think. Something else we could add is a throw function. For this we need to place a second node and signal manipulator in the grab block and make them activate with a throw button. I'll choose R1. The pulse of the signal manipulator should be set to 0.1 or 0.2 milliseconds smooth rise this time. Now add an end gate and wire the already present picked up trigger zone into it along with that signal manipulator. Now add a force applier gadget to the grab block and set it to 100% strength and make it directional. Make sure the arrow points in the way you want the player to throw the object. The throw speed can be set to whatever you want. I'll go for 16 meters per second. It's recommended to make the area of effect just slightly bigger than the grab block. Now connect the end gate to the force applier. Let's connect the throw signal manipulator to the let go tag so the object will actually be thrown. This should get it to work. So now, when we press the throw button, a pulse of 0.1 seconds will be sent to an end gate, which will activate if an object is currently being held. This in turn activates the force applier for a short pulse and any held objects will be forced away from the player. Because the let go tag has been activated at the same time, the object is in free fall at this point and will be launched as if it was thrown. So, one last thing. This kind of system naturally brings a lot of physics glitches with it. While I can't solve them all, one I can somewhat solve is the one where an object glitches out when you press it up against a wall. For this fix, place a laser scope, end gate and keyframe in the microchip on the block on the head of the puppet and wire them into each other along with the picked up trigger zone on the grab block. The laser in the laser scope needs to be rotated so it looks straight forward through the camera and its range needs to be a bit further than the grab block. Basically, we want this laser scope to hit a wall earlier than the object we are holding. Next, edit the keyframe and animate the grab block by grabbing it and placing it near the head of the puppet. The idea is that when there's a wall really close in front of the player while they are holding an object, this keyframe will activate and make the object move towards the player so they can't force it through the wall. One issue though, the object will then probably collide with the player and once again glitch out. That's why we'll give every grabbable object the same label. I'll go for Object. Now, while animating the keyframe that makes the grab block move, you can disable collisions with the object label in the player's tweak menu. After doing this, we should also make it so the laser scope ignores the object label. And that's it! You can now copy the grab logic on the object to any other one and you'll be able to pick it up as well with no issues, as long as you gave it the label object, of course. This even works on other puppets. One last question you might have though. Why am I going for this setup with trigger zones and tags when I could have also used wireless transmitters? No idea, you're welcome. The last thing I'll do this video is to quickly go over my template. I actually changed the logic of it significantly while working on this video because I made a couple weird decisions when designing it originally. At a first glance, a lot of things should seem familiar now. There's a grab block, there are tags labeled pick up, let go, etc. And that's that bit of logic that makes the object move towards the player when facing a wall. It's all there. Let's move through the logic one more time. When you press the grab button, a pulse will be sent through the signal manipulator which will activate a node. The node and manipulator were reversed in the earlier example, but that doesn't matter. Also different is that this node now goes into an end gate before activating the pickup tag. The other part of the gate is occupied by a NOT gate connected to a picked up trigger zone, meaning that the player can only request to grab an object if they press square and they aren't already holding an object. I like to put fill safes everywhere in my logic and this is one. 
So when this is all active, the pickup tag will be activated as a short pulse, which will be recognized by the pickup trigger zone located in the microchip on the object, as long as you're close enough and looking at it, of course. The trigger zone then activates a counter, which counts to 1 and will stay permanently on as a result, and the counter powers on an exclusive gate. This exclusive gate is once again called grab and powers on all the pickup logic. So a follower, which will move the object toward the TP pickup tag on the player's end, and a gyroscope or look at rotator depending on if you want the object to always face you or not. The exclusive gate also connects to the picked up tag, which is used to, for example, make it so you can only activate the let go tag if you're already holding something. One quick thing, the exclusive gate in my template isn't actually set to automatic, but to Q. The reason is that if I set it to automatic, the exclusive gate will permanently stay on for some reason that I genuinely don't understand. Q makes it so an exclusive gate can only be powered off by manually resetting it or when it gets overridden. I placed a second exclusive gate set to Q in the chip on the grab block and powered it on continually. Now every time you pick something up, that exclusive gate will be overridden, and when you let it go, that exclusive gate will re-override the one in the object you picked up. Not a particularly elegant solution, but it works. And of course, if you press square again and an object is currently being carried, the let go tag will activate and the counter in the object's microchip will be reset, meaning the object will simply fall to the ground. The throw logic and prevention of collision logic have stayed the same, so I think you'll be able to figure those out yourself. Now one last thing, this method does look janky sometimes. While the bouncy nature of the follower does look pretty good for things like telekinesis and force powers, it doesn't look great for a simple Half-Life Dishonored-like pickup system. Earlier in this video I wrote off the teleporter as a bad option, but it might not be so bad as I initially thought. If you use a teleporter, once again set to TP pickup, you'll see the object now stays exactly centered at all times, which looks a thousand times better, especially if match target orientation is activated as well. This does then bring the problems with it that you can more easily place objects in walls, that physical interactions are more janky, and that naturally throwing the object after letting go is impossible, but that's probably worth it in the end. So a little correction there. A follower is used best for telekinesis-like powers, while the teleporter is most handy for pickup systems like you see in certain games. That's pretty much it though. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.